All right, it is about that time for Ready, Set, Real Estate for another powerful, informational, exciting, edutaining episode. And I'm excited to introduce to you my new guest who's opening up season three. We are on season three, yes. Welcome, Terika Banks. She is our escrow officer office manager who brings over 20 years of experience i just let me just share a snippet and i love to let people just kind of shine terica banks began her journey into the mortgage industry and quickly found her niche in escrow very rare for those of you who think about i want to get in real estate and you want to wear your real estate sales hat and then you go wait a minute i don't want to do sales it's not for me i don't want to do lead generation and prospecting and door knocking and farming and what is farming right <laughs> so i love that terica has found her space and place in this 1.3 trillion dollars industry she can tell us a lot more about that because uh she'll she'll cover about the importance of wire fraud and wire fraud advisories and those proper instructions. But guess what? Um, she's actually the current office manager at New Era Escrow. And we just want to make sure we shout out New Era Escrow for allowing you to be on today's show today. All right. Erica, <laughs> welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me, Lisa. I'm so excited. Yay, I am. And thank you for your patience with me. So this is what I, what I like about when we go raw, uncut, and real. We let our audience know that um, when we do live streams, there tend to be technical glitches, and today was that day, and so we've learned to improvise <laughs> and rock yes. and roll. Ready, set, real estate will continue. That's now. right. What? <laughs> you made it happen. We made it happen. So I'm excited. Uh, I, I want to say just kind of full disclaimer so people know. Terika and I actually worked together and Terika came out of a recommendation of my transaction coordinator as we were looking for uh, expanding our network of escrow officers and companies. And so I must say, I, I have been pleased. Uh, I've been really happy about your work ethic and communication. And I think those are important. So we'll delve more into that as I kind of start to unravel Yes. <laughs> what is escrow? You know, what people is hear it? This all the time and they say, what is it? we just opened escrow. What the heck does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Yes. Um, it's it's kind of odd. It's so funny. When I start teaching my escrow 101 classes, that's what I start with. Um, I've gotten phone calls from, is this an escort service? Is, <gasps> oh my goodness. You wouldn't believe some of the phone calls that we get. People really don't know exactly what right. it is. Wow. So, <laughs> I've never heard that, but I, I could see that happening, especially with Google and Miss Tyson, yes. or yes. you're asking Siri or Bixby or whatever, Alexa, right. and she right. says, you mean the escort service down the street? <laughs> no, no, no. So just by definition, escrow is a neutral third party. Um, we are a depository. So when you open escrow, you're literally depositing funds or contracts into a neutral third party party's custody. So that really, by definition, that's what we are. So whether it's your es escrow officer, your escrow holder, your escrow agent, we are technically in all real estate transactions, your neutral third party. And we accept your deposit. What you're depositing into escrow is your purchase agreement. And so that by definition, that's what we are. We are what I like to say the glue. We try, we do our best to keep right. all of the working parts together in a real estate transaction. Absolutely. I like that you reiterated a neutral third party about at least three times. Yes. <laughs> yes we I have. just said it number four. We're going to say it throughout. Neutral yeah. third party, neutral third party. Um, I, I'll probably not try to get too too caught up in my feelings right now about yeah. that whole thing, especially when we negotiate as professionals, because you are supposed to be a neutral third party. Uh, we know how those relationships go. And, uh, you know, I wanted to ask you to cover, and I'm going to do a shameless plug right now, because, you know, I just released this book called Just Fell Out of Escrow. Yes. <laughs> and 
you definitely opened up with where we need to open up with, which is what is escrow? And I love that you said that it is a, you're depositing your purchase agreement. I've never heard it that way, actually. You know, I always think about, yes, your money, but in addition to that, we need to be reminded and our clients that the money is a condition of the contract. So it's together. It's all connected. That purchase agreement for most and all actually escrow officers, that's our Bible. Yeah. Um, your escrow instructions, anything that you get from our office, those are supplement to that purchase agreement. Right. So once the agents, the parties, the buyers and seller sign that contract and it's then deposited into escrow, that's our Bible. We're always going to refer back to that contract any counters to that contract mm -hmm. comes to that contract. I wanted to ask, you see, my mind is racing right now because I don't know, I mean, 20 years, like Woo. walk us through that journey, please. How you then found that niche in okay. escrow because I it's think, it. especially because this is our show supports Real Estate 100 Youth Foundation. So we're identifying alternate pathways to success for our youth who may be thinking, what should I do in life? You've made a career of this. And yes, I want to definitely. hear what that, what that journey has been like for you. Okay, so it's a, it's a pretty interesting story. Um, I, I love interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I actually graduated from UC Irvine with a degree in dance. So um, after graduation, I moved to New York for a short period of time. I studied with Alvin Ailey for a very for a few months, it was awesome. Um, then I came back, I toured with Lula Washington Dance Company for about two years. Wow. Um, but, um, and that's my passion, of course. Yes. But tours come to an end. Mm. And myself living back with my grandparents, bless them. Um, however, I needed to work. I had a good friend that was working at a small company in Irvine called Temple Inland Mortgage. It does not exist anymore, um, but it was during a refi boom and they needed help. Mm. Um, I went in, I was an, a loan opener and a lot of data processing. And um, I started to get the itch, like I'm getting a paycheck, I'm learning about real estate, everything's moving so fast. And then there were layoffs and I said, well, wait a second, I'm gonna go back dancing. This doesn't work for me. Right. Right then, I went to Marina Mortgage in Long Beach. I worked with a, a young girl named Rachel, and I was her assistant. I worked with her for a few months, and then finally, now I'm really into the escrow life, the whole real estate, um, opening loans and the connections between mortgage brokers and real estate agents and what it all means. Right. Two years into the business, and then I started working at Escrow LA in Santa Monica, and I landed there for seven years. Wow. But, um, it was very um, good because back then, and this is the early, I'm sorry, the late 90s, um, we were balancing files by hand. There wasn't, you would run a tape on each side. Um, now we have all these fancy software programs. Right. But that training, I'll, I'll never forget it. It was the best. It really was. Good. So it's, it's funny you say by hand because I know in the event when things, like we had our technical glitches, yes. right? And yes. then things go down yes. and people go, oh my gosh, we now have to reconcile this account by hand. I have to write the check and get Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who does that? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and how quickly we get spoiled because yes. we have the technology to, that has really created such an ease and a streamlined process for what, what we do in the industry. So, and so sh shout out to the dance groups that you have studied with, especially because I was just coming from my workout and they are advertising to Alvin Ailey's having, uh, I think it's yes, the third, a fourth through the seventh. Yes. So, and one of my dear friends who, also with them and, and toured with the Lula Washington and same thing and lived in Germany, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with that dance life. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, um, I had to dig a little deep and find out where my connection was between dance and escrow. Yes. And, and it came about that there's a lot of detail in dancing. Mm -hmm. and, um, the, the many times I was told I didn't hit it, the step was incorrect, 
you didn't um, get the movement in between the movement. All of those things start to play in my head now on my escrow transactions. Mm -hmm. I had to really do some research as to how do I make this connection because there was a passion for dance and I just related it to this whole real estate world now. You know, it's so funny when you, because when you say that, I thought about before we got online, one of the things I shared with you is I said, we have a guide, we're going to do it this way, but I'm just going to cha-cha with you. Yes. I said, yes, you did. did you and I that? loved it. I was like, she's connecting. We're connecting. Yeah. I said, I'm, I'm just going to cha-cha with you. I'm going to do this dance <laughs> back and forth. Yes. Um, because we know what we do well. And, and I really see one of the things that I want what I would like for people to gather from what you do is skills unneeded yes. just and just kind of walk us through opening escrow and perhaps let's cover buy side and then when you and and then working on you know when you get instructions from the listing agent for the seller okay all right so um, I kind of I like to call it a roadmap so we'll we'll talk about a roadmap for buyers um, basically escrow opens. We talked about that deposit of the purchase contract. Um, the first step for buyers would be to deposit their funds, their earnest money deposit into escrow. All right. Um, and that usually per contract is usually within the first three days. Right. Um, sometimes it's different. Uh, sometimes we want a deposit based on the contract in 24 hours. Mm. In that, that's a little bit more common now. Um, so really? that's aggressive. I, I you know, oh my, I've seen it. I'm on already contract. aggressive. Don't do that to me. I'm going to start <laughs> writing them off for 24 hours. <laughs> 24 hours. I've seen it a lot more recently. Really? Uh, but you know that earnest money deposit it, it's true by name earnest money deposit right um, and and sometimes i've seen it used as a tactic mm. um, negotiation process we have an opened escrow but i haven't received the deposit in seven days or so forth but it's really important we buy by that contract right so that's for the first step for the buyers um there's so many layers in the escrow process. So when that happens, within those first two to three days, your escrow officer is ordering reports. We're ordering the natural hazard disclosure report. If a title report hasn't been opened, we are ordering the title report. Um, and we're preparing escrow instructions. Once that title report comes in, we're reviewing, we're making sure there's no red flags on title. Um, so we're doing layered work. At the same time, um, we are issuing documents for the buyers and sellers to sign simultaneously. All right. Um, so um, just in relation to the purchase agreement, the escrow instructions are just supplement. All your escrow instructions are doing is reiterating everything that's in that purchase agreement. So the buyers and seller will get the same copy of the escrow instructions. Um, we um, now, of course, by technology, we send out documents via DocuSign. Um, we still send hard copies if, you, if the clients would like. Um, moving forward, at the same time, we're also connecting, if the buyer has a loan, we're connecting with the buyer's lender as well. Mm. And at that time, the lender is requesting for fees. Um, we're trying to gather all the fees from the title company. Um, we're doing tax prorations at that time. So again, those first three to five days in the escrow process are pretty crucial because everybody's asking for a lot of items at that time. Right. My favorite time, actually, too. Yes. <laughs> Get it, done. Yes, get it done. Yes, email. Get it done. Go, and, go, and go. I, and I like, I like that you shared um, the documents also being available. DocuSign. Yes. I'm going to ask you: Do you do you is there? Are you finding a demographic that prefers DocuSign versus hard copies? Um, I've um, actually, I would like to say my desk right now um, is ninety percent. Um, our clients are very, um, most of them are now tech savvy. Mm -hmm. I say um, we're doing a lot of digital work. Um, however, there are one or two clients, um, and I'm the escrow officer. I actually like to meet my clients when I, I do. Um, so when there's a seller that needs to have a grant deed sign, our office is always open. We make arrangements to meet them um, if we can or if they need. Um, sometimes people like that personal touch and they have those questions. It's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of paperwork. It is. And I want to pause right there because yes. this is definitely a great 
<laughs> a great gem that people should, and I covered this in my book. I said, I absolutely advocate that you meet the people you are doing business with. Yes. Uh, and, I, and this is why Tarek is on is because she, you know, people tend to be an extension of the way I work. And, you know, when I recognize those qualities, it is important for me to also nurture those relationships, uh, those business relationships so that, you know, we're all meeting the same goal, which is just really excelling at client services yes. for our clients. Yes. And I absolutely am happy that you said that because for people who are so tech savvy and leaning on hundred percent online transactions and they wonder, I never met anybody. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's not normal. Let me just say that. It's not normal. It's not normal. And, and in this day and age, um, you touched on it earlier. We have had this wire fraud alert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about it. Escrow and title companies. And um, it's sad to say some people don't believe it, but we've seen it happen. Um, it is scary. Um, down to um, anyone's email can be hacked at any time. We get tons of emails all day. Now, most escrow companies at this point have security, have firewalls, um, have um, secured emails, encrypted emails. I know um, a year ago there was a lot of pushback, but when people started losing money, <laughs> it, it became a real thing. Right. Uh, what seems to happen now, and I know in our office, we actually send out a, a wire fraud alert, um, and we have taken extra, te extra steps with our banking uh, company, which is City National, um, to um, prevent this wire fraud. What has happened in the past to many companies, agents or buyers or sellers will get in a fraudulent email and they will act as the escrow company. They'll act as the um, buyer or seller or the agent. And in turn, we've um, in many conferences I've seen where an escrow company or title company's wiring instructions are completely um, remade. Wow. Those same um, signature lines. Um, so it becomes a, um, very important for your escrow officers to be detailed. And, and I don't want to rely on emails alone. We have a, a form where we have, before we send out any wires, um, someone from our wire department, from our office, will call your clients directly. We'll have to verify a social security number. Um, there's a lot of verification in, in, in order for us to send out a wire. Um, but it also affects buyers. When I send out the wiring instructions at opening, I don't send the account number. I know a lot of buyers have called me. I'm like, well, there's no account number. That's because I want to talk to you. I want right. to get the right account number. So you have to actually call in. I'll give you my bank information. I'll give you the routing number, but I need you to speak to me or one of my assistants to make sure you have the right account number. And it's very important. Um, it's tons of money, tons of money coming in and out of escrows. And, it, and it's important that we keep our clients safety first. Absolutely. And <clears throat> For those of you who are listening, this is a very, very important. Uh, if you missed the episode where I covered how to do a wire, please check the list in the archive. That was season two. I did a free, I do live Q and A's and I did cover how to do a, web, uh, a wire because uh, I re realized one of my clients, Terika, mm -hmm. we were opening escrow and she did not know how to do a wire. Right. And so I realized, oh my gosh, we are taking so much for granted in these transactions. We're assuming yes. people know what yes. this stuff is, what to do. So this is why the show is my favorite part of my whole career right now is because I get to chop it up in little pieces. That's right. Bring great people on like yourself to just kind of, you know, share what it what it's like from that side. Because when you said what escrow was, that's what I say. When you said what the uh, purchase agreement and the escrow instructions are, that's what I say. Right. <laughs> it's right. just reiterated. It's just going to be in a very easy to read format, sometimes five pages or 10 pages, depending if they're supplement. Correct. Right. Correct. That's so correct. I feel really, I feel, I feel real super right now. I'm feeling <laughs> mighty, mighty super agent right now because it's just confirmation and like, Lisa, yes, you do know how to read. <laughs> you do. We do. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm sure and I you know it, it's 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 a, it's funny 
But it's so important when we say due diligence, right? Read, right. Right? And people don't want to read. People uh, don't want to read. They don't want to read. And, it's and, so we, and you know what? We have to drill it. All these, um, as you would say, nuggets, we have to drill it in so people are aware. I know people get tired um, of talking about wire fraud, but it's real. Right. And I hate for it to happen to one of our clients. So Exactly. So I wanted to, um, so I, and I'll go through this with my audience as we kind of navigate the roadmap to success, a roadmap to escrow. I'm thinking roadmap to success. Um, <laughs> it is success. I would, keys and commissions. That's the goal. <laughs> so post opening, exchanging documents, uh, what's, what are some things that you see that come up in a transaction that will have us going left in another direction? Um, and that can be anything, just so that people may be aware of, you know, maybe I should kind of really pay attention to this and right. not feel like, you know, we can all resolve it. And that's really the goal when we work together. We right. know things come up. So what, what, what have been some things that you've experienced in um, escrow that you've had t everybody come together and say, well, let's work through this. Right. So um, what I find, um, what um, pushes to a successful closing is communication. Um, what happens many times, whether it's a buyer, seller, or even agent, um, sometimes life happens. Mm -hmm. Have to travel um, during escrow. I'm not sure why it happened during escrow, but what I tell you, I have the most clients that are out of town when they are in escrow. And that's fine as long as we all are aware. Um, I know there are several clients that I've had in the past um, for whatever reasons have to go out of the country. And that's a, that's a big thing when you have a seller that has to get grant deed notarized. Mm. And, time frame that we have to abide by based on our purchase contract. Um, depending on what country you're in, getting a grant deed notarized could probably take up to three weeks because you would, you would definitely have to go to the U.S. Embassy, right? those type of things. But again, it all goes back to communication. Your escrow officer would be able to guide you to where to go. We could probably get it done before you go out of town. Those type of situations always come up. I'm so glad you brought up grant deed because again, that's another thing that we're assuming people know what it, what they, what it is. Okay. 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 <laughs> so let's just explain quickly what the grant deed is because I'm I absolutely get that notarized before your client leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Listening agents, get it yeah. notarized before they leave town. Please. Uh, Please. So the grant deed is the document that your escrow officer sends out to the sellers to have signed and notarized. This is the document that will be recorded at the close of escrow. It's a transfer deed. So at the close of escrow, on the day of recording, the document from the seller to the buyer is recorded at the county recorder's office and that document is the grant deed. Perfect, perfect. You see you guys, <laughs> look at this. this. You've got grant deed, yes. you've, you've got wire fraud advisory happening, uh, earnest deposit, we talked about that. Yes. Oh my goodness. So as we get closer to keys and commissions, grant deed is a very critical part of that. Let's talk about the funding. I'll be, you know, uh, all cash, quote unquote, all cash purchases, right? But we know they come in forms of wires. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. You know, hard money loans, private yes. lenders, finances, <laughs> it's all coming from the... That's, that's all back to communication. I, I have a lot of all cash transactions, but I tell you, Three days before closing, I'll get an email from a hard money lender and that says, oh, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. We're going to fund tomorrow. Um, but yeah, we, we handle all types of transactions and most escrow officers are, are prepared <laughs> for the last minute uh, um, hiccups. And I wouldn't even say that's a hiccup, but a lot of our investors are use, utilizing the hard money lenders as well. Right. So, and very key for, for those of you when you hear all cash, right? And especially as a first time buyer, I will highly recommend that you get with the lender that does what is TBD. I will cover that on another show, but that's that to be determined or uh, completely conditional approvals, meaning they submit you to underwriting, which makes you cash equivalent and you can compete with those all cash office, uh, right. offers. So get with the right team is what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. <laughs> Erica, oh my goodness. I just, I, I really want to be mindful of your time. So uh, one of the things that I wanted to ask 
uh, do you have anything coming up? So I'm, we know what you're, you, you're with New Era Escrow. What transactions, what services do you all offer and what areas do you cover? Okay, well, we are licensed for the entire state of California, so we can handle all transactions in the state of California. Um, the transactions that we handle now are um, residential. That, of course, includes single family, uh, duplex, condominiums. We also handle commercial, um, multi-unit, new construction as well. Uh, short sales, if there's any out there, we still handle those. Yeah, there are, actually. I see them popping there up. Are. Yeah. <laughs> We um, handle real estate own, that's our REOs, um, refinances, of course, and um, more recently, we've had a lot of probate and trust transactions, mm. So, um, which is very interesting. Um, but we handle all of those transactions and even um, an occasional for sale by owner. So we, we handle those as well. The very important. I'm glad that for sale, for sale by owners are aware that... Um, you know, utilize the escrow, escrow company to really make sure to, that you're navigating through and being compliant. You, you've, there's, there's so much involved with the real estate transactions, there's so with much. closures and the legalities and you're opening up yourself to risk. So make sure you have the right team for representation. Uh, yes. If you do decide to go in that direction. So that's exciting to know. So good, good, good. Is there, do you, I, I know you're, you tended, you're going to, I'm assigning you to come do <laughs> webinars, how workshops for our, yes, for our yes, local yes. boards. Do you have anything available that maybe our listening or viewing audience would, who are in within the LA surrounding areas, uh, would like to know about? Yes, actually, um, coming up in April, uh, April 17th, I'm teaching another Escrow 101 class. We're going to title this one Spring into Escrow. And that's Ooh. going to be at uh, Pacific Play of Realty in Westchester. And that's uh, April 17th at 3.30. And, um, I will also say, um, because I am on the board of the Los Angeles Escrow Association. Oh, that's what I hope. Yeah. Oh, well, well, I don't want to rush you off. I just want to okay. make sure I hit all the points in my mind. That's what I wanted to ask you. Thank you for that. What does that mean as, as a member, excuse me, and <clears throat> what benefits does that offer you and your clients? Right. So um, I have a pool of escrow officers, seasoned senior escrow officers, certified um, escrow officers at my resources. Um, we're all members of the California Escrow Association and, and the Los Angeles chapter of the Escrow Association. We have a monthly educational um, workshop or meeting and um, we're, we do earn credits by attending those meetings, but um, the, the key part is educational. Um, we can sit closely with the city of LA. We have um, the Department of Building and Safety. Each meeting provides um, nuggets, as you would say, for your escrow officers, and it keeps us um, in tune and relevant yeah. of the upcoming trends, market trends. Um, I remember when uh, the new CFPB rules came in, into play and TRID and all those new um, rules and regulations and laws for the state of California, the escrow associations are our go-to. Um, those are the people that are fighting for us as escrow officers um, and on the legislative realm. And um, they give us all the new and upcoming ideas and things that we can use in our office. Um, this meeting coming up in uh, March, which is um, actually, actually next week, it's on the 19th. Um, this meeting is actually going to be about marketing tools for the escrow officer, which is really good for us. And also, um, they do an open form. Tell them you're ahead of the curve. You made exactly. on, on Facebook, yeah, YouTube, I know. Instagram, <laughs> radio podcasts, everywhere. Yes. <laughs> I'm on Ready, Set, Real Estate. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the monthly meetings are really good. Um, sometimes escrow officers will seem as if they're in their own little world, their own bubble. It's good to be with like kind individuals, bounce off ideas and, and, and make sure I'm staying in compliance with what I need to do here at the office. Right. I'm, I, that makes me feel so proud, actually, <laughs> because I'm, I'm, you know, I've, I've been more active and I'm part of different boards and organizations <laughs> now and and, you know, I'm seeing and finding the value with, because it keeps me abreast. It keeps me, yes. it, all, all those things you touched on, those yes. tools, those strategies, those best practices. So let that be a real estate gem for you all as well. Whatever you decide to do in this industry, 
get surrounded uh, with like-minded individuals uh, so that you can elevate, right? I mean, that's the goal is it's definitely for us to elevate. Okay, this was fun. I actually feel like I need to bring you back when we get when we're <laughs> when, on a, when we're on a regular platform. <laughs> I feel like I want to bring you back and just kind of delve into because I want to maybe cover tra specific transactions, you know, and okay. talk about the types of transactions and what escrow looks like from that perspective. Yes, I definitely. think that every moment of escrow is a learning opportunity, and I know my escrows have not all been the easiest. And so, which has given me those gems that I could put in books and I could do webinars is because it right. challenged me to grow. Yes. And it, it, it excites me because it challenged me to grow. I mean, it's just me. Yeah, escrow in itself is challenging and every escrow is going to be different. And I think that's where I find the excitement as well. Um, once I get a contract, I'm like, what is this going to be? Right, me too. <laughs> what kind of curves? What do I need to do? How are we going to get this solved? But it is exciting. It's an exciting experience. And I hope that um, I know I have buyers and sellers that enter the process and they have this mysterious like, oh, no, we're going into escrow. But for someone like you and me, it's exciting. We're excited. Yeah. I, I want to see what's going to come up and how we can solve it as a team. Right. As a team, well said. As we get ready to conclude, I would love for you to share a real estate gem with our listening and viewing audience. Um, go ahead and let them know. To bring it okay. home, Erica. Well, uh, I know this is something that Lisa preaches all the time. We have to stay connected, stay connected, get connected, and always please subscribe to Ready, Set, Real Estate. <laughs> Cute. It's awesome for us. Um, I try to log in as much as I can. I know my desk gets a little hectic, but when I can tune in, it's good for us to have these gems as a real estate community as well. And so thank, thank you for having this platform for us. Oh, thank you, Terika. That means so much. Thank you. Because I know I, I, I actually, y'all, I wanted to bring her on at the top of the year. And I circled <laughs> back to her. I said, uh, you didn't. You still, you know, I got to come back. You're coming yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. So I'll be back work. anytime. I'll, I'll yes. make this is important. Yes, this is important. And I'm so glad that you are representing the escrow aspect of it uh, because, again, $1.3 trillion, this yes. is what this industry uh, generates annually. And that's not just in the salesperson commission. And that's right. why it's important. Make sure you guys are tuned in. We're on radio podcasts everywhere. Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Anchor, Stitcher, An uh, Breaker, Overcast, on and on and on. Make sure you stay connected. Connect, build, and share at LA Super Agent on all social media. And again, this show supports proudly, happily, we're an advocate of youth real estate literacy. We teach ages 11 to 17 through our nonprofit Real Estate 100 Youth Foundation. So make sure you tune in next week on another powerful episode of Ready, Set, Real Estate. Terika, thank you so much. Thank we'll you, Lisa. You All right. Talk to you soon. All right.